the case for showing up to church. Even if you don't believe in God, do you have to believe in God to go to church? I used to think so, but more agnostics should give religion a try. Americans are less likely than ever to attend religious services. According to a recent Gallup poll, just 30% of U.S. adults attend religious services weekly or nearly weekly, down from 42% in the early 2000s. This rapid secularization has resulted in serious consequences for American community building. When Americans left their churches, synagogues, and mosques, they didn't replace time spent in religious observance by joining a secular community organization. Instead, we're spending more time alone than ever. Young people in particular seem to be driving this trend. 34% of Generation Z are religious knowns, the most of any generational cohort. Young people, who are fleeing religion faster than older Americans, have also seen the largest decline in socializing, Derek Thompson wrote in The Atlantic. There's no record of any period in U.S. history where young people were less likely to attend religious services. For a long time, this described me. While I grew up regularly attending religious services, I stopped attending by high school. I simply lost, or rather, never developed, the strong spiritual faith I thought was necessary to participate in a religious community. For much of my young adulthood, I was a strident atheist. I appreciated the Christian ethical values I was raised with, but I couldn't believe that any God was real. I wanted to have faith, but I simply couldn't find it. While I could entertain agnosticism, a full-blown spiritual certainty seemed impossible, and so did the idea that I belonged in a Christian community. Over my senior year of college, that began to change. It started with a class on medieval mysticism that exposed me to works by Augustine and Aquinas and Julian of Norwich's stirring revelations of divine love. It ended with an internet pile-on. In my senior year at the University of Virginia, I published a controversial guest essay in the New York Times. The piece went viral and my life was turned upside down. My first name was trending and I was condemned by well-known journalists. While I had the support of loving family and friends, the experience was destabilizing. I found myself spending more time alone in my tiny dorm room, scrolling on my phone and reading cruel comments. I could feel myself being sucked into self-obsessed despair, and I wanted out. Impulsively, I tried praying using the simple, conversational style I had learned in my childhood churchgoing. Forcing myself to pray, especially for those saying the most uncharitable things about me, turned out to be extraordinarily grounding. It provided crucial internal peace during a psychologically vulnerable time. Despite a relatively brief low, I managed to escape my time as the internet's main character relatively unscathed. The experience helped me realize that I no longer cared whether God was real or not. That question had ceased to be interesting. It's a little embarrassing to admit that being criticized on the internet helped me find religion. When I moved to Washington, D.C. after graduation, I started attending an Anglo-Catholic parish. I was first drawn to it out of a desire for ritual, especially the traditions of Anglo-Catholicism. But I was hooked by a totally unexpected reason, the community. Within hours of my first Sunday Mass, I was added to group chats and had made new friends. It was almost an instant gang of friends, one formed around shared values and a shared interest in Gregorian chants. At a time when Americans, especially young Americans, are more isolated than ever, having not just individual friends, but a real community is increasingly difficult. Social life after college often feels fragmented. This kind of individual social interaction can be worthwhile, but it can't replicate the interconnectedness provided by formalized community groups. If dozens of parishioners count on seeing you on Sunday, it's harder to fall into isolation during a rough patch. It's a lot harder to ghost your girlfriend if you know you'll see her again on Sunday. Becoming part of a religious institution also allows members to get outside of their own age-segregated bubbles. After Mass, I talk to elderly parishioners and hear the babbles of babies and toddlers, something unlikely to happen at a bar or concert. A religious community forces you to become the kind of person who shows up. Your life gains a new rhythm with new obligations. For example, for weddings at my church, all members are invited to the ceremony. While there are plenty of secular alternatives to religious community, non-religious groups cannot provide the sense of shared moral priorities and explicit moral instruction that religious communities impart. This moral element is one of the biggest reasons I joined a church instead of a soccer club. I want to feel accountable to something other than my own conscience, 
and the hour and a half of weekly contemplation provided in church is difficult to replicate anywhere else. Despite my regular church attendance, I still haven't developed a rock-solid faith. I've joked, and said as much on Twitter, that I only believe in God about 30% of the time on a good day. My ambivalence sets me apart from most of my friends from church, a group that includes a few seminarians. But it doesn't keep me from coming back. How common is the path I've taken? It's unclear, but it seems rare. While many Americans identify as spiritual but not religious, being religious but not spiritual is far more unusual. According to one Gallup poll, just 3% of Americans who identify as atheists or agnostics attend church weekly or nearly weekly. However, this is probably an undercount, excluding agnostics and atheists who identify with a religious label. As church attendance has declined, so has our connectedness to one another. For the increasing numbers of spiritually ambivalent Americans, there may be an unusual solution to the loss of community. As counterintuitive as it might seem, more agnostics should give religion a try.